Мы реально хотим разогнать тему с тем, что... Do we really want to talk about how badly we messed up and then decided to improve both physics and sound? Actually, it was a bit different. Specifically, we were looking for anything good at all that we could release. Because it was practically impossible to make something good from scratch. Want me to tell you how it happened for real? Actually, the head of development don't know whether I'm allowed to name names, wanted to release both new physics and sound in update 10.0 Rubicon. When we investigated all the details, we had many common tests. We realized that we had a lot of things to polish properly before the release. We worked hard and we're even going to release a bunch of new features within update 10.0. A new mode, new physics, and new sound. Nevertheless, tests prove that we would be better off polishing everything to perfection before the release. Yeah, you're right. Indeed, we even wanted to release the new sound within update 10.0 that eventually turned into Rubicon. But on one hand, the results of the performance tests were not so good. I mean, it wasn't tested properly on computers of all specs. On the other hand, to be honest, the sound content was, I wouldn't say it was raw, but it was nothing out of the ordinary. It only included the minimum must-have features. The new sound did not bring anything super cool to the game. We just moved the sound to a new engine and made everything more or less acceptable. If we presented it as a brand new feature and said that we were moving to a new sound engine, players would be confused at best. They would be like, so what? What's so cool about this engine? Where's new content? Where's anything interesting? Actually, the game physics contributes to the sound support significantly. I mean, we really transferred data from the server, for example, the engine speeds, gears, all this stuff. All vehicle operation modes were transferred to WISE. This system has great potential. So it would be really stupid of us not to unleash it to the fullest and release the unpolished feature. There came a moment when I understood that people were starting to complain about the physics, while in fact the issue was really about the sound. Nobody paid any attention to it. In fact, before the reworked engine sounds were released, vehicle sounds had only two states. Idle, when a vehicle was in neutral, and moving. It sounded like Also, after reaching a certain speed, the vehicle engine changed its sound. Instead of ah, it sounded like oh, and that's it, nothing more. Players didn't like moments when vehicles started moving. They were used to these two states, idle or moving. So we improved the sound instead by adding the acceleration sound. It sounded like vroom, da -da 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 vroom, and the vehicle started moving. So when players pressed the forward key, it seemed that their vehicles were too sluggish. Players believed that vehicles accelerated more slowly than they actually did. We even compared the vehicle speeds before and after the update and proved that vehicles moved at the same speed. <laughs> Yeah, but eventually it worked better. If we compare the sounds before and after update 914, they're like oil and water. For example, the Death Star shot sound became much more impressive. Alex, do you remember receiving this negative feedback regarding the Death Star sounds? We tried to add the distortion effect to the shot sound. <laughs> At first, we were not sure about it because of the clipping, but eventually it worked out. The result was totally mind-blowing. 
из студийных мониторов. This crazy sound came out of the super expensive studio speakers. <звук> yeah, it was absolutely terrifying. In 2015, we participated in the Igromir game show and put a lot of effort into it. But what was the outcome? So we decided to stop participating in different third-party exhibitions. Moreover, to be honest, Igromir changed as well. So what was the idea? Well, we had to make something on our own. Something cool. Really cool. In February 2016, or even later, we started getting ready for WG Fest. About two weeks before WG Fest, we went to Moscow with a large team to prepare for the event properly. And also, we had the eSports finals running at the same time. So different teams were organizing the event. One of the teams was from Poland. They didn't speak Russian. What could go wrong? <laughs> What could go wrong, indeed? I have a list of Polish swear words. <laughs> I made this list to communicate with these guys using, let's say, common language. By the way, k***a is the easiest one. And, and I know many more. <laughs> So, when the entire Wargaming team was about to arrive, which was actually two planes full of people, We understood that we were 16 hours behind schedule. An event is not an update or a patch. We can't move its release and say, eh, sorry guys, we need more time, check it out tomorrow. No, we couldn't do that. So finally, we made it. We succeeded for real. Obviously, we started a bit later, because the stage was being cleaned just before the beginning, while Nikolai Belton was getting ready. So he was rehearsing his presentation while the cleaners were doing the stage, because the guys at the stream complained that the stage was dirty. And I was like, I don't care about the dirty stage. We have people right here. So there were cleaners. Dolph Lundgren was hanging around. We put a carpet on the wall for him to make it funnier. Our guys came up with this carpet idea just the night before the opening. They were like, guys, what do we put as a background for Dolph? Well, nothing, just a white wall. Nah, let's put a carpet instead. It'll be fun. Fine, it's midnight. Let's go and buy a carpet anyway. Why not? My favorite story, and actually my favorite bug, are both related to Dolph Lundgren. Once there was a Jira task for creating a promo, and there was the following resolution in this task. Problem. Dolph Lundgren is not beautiful. Expected result. Make Dolph Lundgren beautiful. This truly was a legendary bug we came across in the development. <laughs> It was midnight. Where did you get a carpet? Thank God it was Moscow. You can find anything in Moscow at night. There's a carpet convenience store there. It's open 24 hours a day. <laughs> That's true. In 2017, we needed chains for a certain zone. It was 2 a.m. when we went out looking for chains. I enjoyed the reaction of our accountants. After WG Fest, they were reviewing my report. It listed 12 Gorka suits, 12 Kalashnikov rifles, 12 pairs of boots. Next, the carpet! <laughs> I know another story. 
I believe I can tell it now. Vitaly might not even know about it. To introduce new sound in Update 914, we first needed to prepare good sound. We needed to reduce the client sound volume by 10 to 12 decibels. And we had to make players get used to it within a year. Basically, a 12 decibel reduction meant that we had to reduce the client volume by 2.5 to 3 times. So if we compare the 100% client volume at the end of 2014 and the client volume in Update 914, there is a difference. The latter is 2.5 to 3 times lower. There is a reason for this. Let's say you're watching TV, switching channels, and suddenly you switch to a channel that has a much greater volume. It can be annoying. The point is that this channel does not meet the volume standard. We wanted the client standard volume to match the average YouTube or movie volume. Or, for example, the volume of a Skype call. In other words, we wanted to make it more consistent. We didn't want to attract players' attention to the reduction. So we reduced the general volume by approximately 2 dB with each update. So, we stole sound from players. There is an interesting story regarding the B2 performance. The time came for them to finish, and someone was like, let them sing one last song. While someone else was like, no, no more songs, stop him. Actually, B2 didn't want to. Well, it was December, party season, and the bands were coming and going, coming and going. Yolka was the first to put on a show. She didn't even know where she was. She was like, where am I? Who are these people? Why does the party start so early? She was giving her show at midday. Yeah. So she didn't understand why the party started at midday. Basically, she's cool and very hearty. As for B2, they were late. The traffic is very heavy in Moscow. It doesn't matter whether you're bringing a carpet or B2. So they were very late, and we had to do our best to entertain the audience. They finally came out. Then, the time came to finish the show. Moreover, the legislation dictated, so... And also, we had the eSports running. So first we waited for the band, then we had this eSports. I mean, at first, we thought that B2 were late, but it turned out that we were one more hour behind schedule. We had to finish the eSports competition. That's why we shut it down eventually. It bothered us too much. So that was the reason for shutting down the eSports. Yeah, that's true. I'd forgotten about it. Even now, it makes my eye twitch. I remember B2 were giving their show, which they started an hour later. The atmosphere there was very cool. There were many adults listening to the band late in the evening, swinging lighters or phones. So they were singing their last songs, and the atmosphere was incredible. Suddenly, Mohammed called, or was it someone else? He said that we had to finish immediately or we would get shut down. I don't remember the exact situation, but I remember that someone called me and said that the band had to stop and leave. <laughs> That's for sure. It was terrible. So we had to choose between eSports and B2. Meanwhile, B2 were enjoying the show, because the light was great, and so was the audience and feedback. <laughs> then Viktor Kisli called. He called and asked to return B2. He was watching the stream and wanted the band back. So they finally came out for one last song. They were first kicked off the stage, and then Victor was like, no way, get them back. He suggested increasing the amount of rent we had to pay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
It was fun, yet sometimes sad. At some point, I got tired of trying to put everything together. I gathered several people responsible for different aspects and asked them to talk among themselves and sort everything out. I told them, you need to reach an agreement, and I'm tired. I haven't slept for five days already. So you're responsible for esports, and you're responsible for the stage and content. It's up to you to decide. It was a fight between two Yokozuna. Can you hear me? As for Frontline, at first, we had an idea of something huge, massive, and epic. I don't remember how we came up with the basic concept, but I remember that, initially, we wanted to make the Frontline mode for 100 players. A total of 100 players and bots, this was the original idea. From the very beginning, we were obsessed with the idea of the Normandy events. We wanted to implement it in the form of a 50 versus 50 mode, plus bots that were supposed to distract the defenders. Obviously, back then, we didn't have the proper technology to implement it. We were looking forward to the possibility to stream textures. This was when we started cooperating with Bongfish. This is an Austrian team. We went there several times. We went there in December 2017, in mid-December. Their office is located in the city center, in front of a square. Graz is a beautiful Austrian city. It was already decorated for Christmas. There was a Christmas fair. I went there with the following thoughts on my mind. Guys, the release is ahead. We need to crunch at 5 p.m. and I need to call my wife and tell her I'm not going to come home tonight. Moreover, I'm not coming home this month. I need to ensure the release. So, we tried to explain all these matters, yeah. Nevertheless, the guys did well. They got into it quite soon. It was really cool to work with them. I miss them. I need to go there sometime and visit them when the borders are open again in a couple of years. I remember at some WG Fest, I believe it was in 2017, we had the eSports finals running. And suddenly, all the screens shut down. There was sound, but no image. And someone next to me asked, What is it? Is everything fine? I said, Yeah, sure, they will get the visuals back in a moment. Meanwhile, I looked at the booth. Generally, nothing unusual happens there. There's always silence. Those guys have nerves of steel. They've seen a lot of things. Once they had troubles with the ring during the Olympic Games, it simply failed to open. So they've seen all kinds of things. So I looked at them and saw that two important specialists were shouting at each other. One of them was like, you are not giving us the signal. And the other one was like, we're not receiving a signal from you. Big trouble. Finally, we found out that a switch had broken. So, a switch broke. And we had to look for a replacement. As always, the traffic in Moscow was very heavy. We couldn't simply go and buy one. The eSports finals was running. The guys turned to me and asked what was going on. I said that everything would be fine in a moment. Yeah, and I remember the September of 2015. We suddenly understood that the new year was ahead, and we had to make an event. And we didn't even have a concept back then. Earlier, I analyzed the charts on different game events, as well as other data. I found out that players' interest increased upon release of a new event, but decreased again after a while. The audience always wanted an event in the metagame format. They would like to participate in events while still playing their favorite random battles. So we can modify random battles somehow. For example, introduce something that players could collect. It also corresponded to the idea of the garage an average Russian guy might have. An average garage is a cave where a guy stores all his artifacts. 
Every two years, he throws them out and readjusts his garage, customizing it in his image. This is the way I treat my in-game garage. The in-game garage resembles such a cave, so we wanted to give players something they could brag about. For example, I fought a good battle, did something, and now I have a reward standing somewhere in my garage. Eventually, we came up with the idea of decorating the New Year tree. Everyone loves decorating New Year trees. This was the first idea that came to mind. It soon transformed into a draft and we started development. Next, we built a prototype. As far as I remember, in November, we presented it to the Cypress team. So, we were demonstrating it and they didn't say a word during the entire green light. Only silence. We finished. And for the next 10 seconds, nothing happened. Then, Sergei Berkatovsky said, burn all the documents, shoot all persons involved. And the call was over. <laughs> so, the event was not released in 2015. Sergei said that World of Tanks was a game for serious guys. It has no place for a New Year tree or any such things. However, the next year, some new specialists joined the Minsk office. We faced the same situation again. It was September and we had nothing to release for New Year. I presented the same idea once again and said, look what we have here. We'll refresh the build and show you everything. I thought that I hadn't been fired the previous time, but I definitely would be this time. I'd have to do something else. So, I decided to give it a try. And it worked out. Get decorations. Dress your New Year tree and snowitzer with them. Level up the holiday atmosphere and get a box of presents for each level. Tanker, start accomplishing those missions. Share the festive spirit. I remember the launch itself. We reached 850,000 players online. Obviously, we had previously reached a total of 1 million active users online, but since then, some servers were given to World of Warships. Our current server capacities are not supposed to support more than 850,000 online players at a time. So, back then, our server teams worked really hard for a couple of days deploying and adjusting server capacities. The server load was in the red zone. Nevertheless, they did well. The servers didn't go down. We successfully launched the event. It was also fun the next year. We were so sure about the event's success. We received positive feedback from players. They loved it. Obviously, we wanted to repeat it. However, we planned to introduce it the way we wanted, to make it massive. We introduced different decoration collections for different regions, upgraded the progression concept, and put the Type 59 into the boxes with presents. I checked the stats on the first day of the launch and noticed that the Type 59 was in every fifth box. Every fifth box? Yeah, I felt like I'd lost five years of my life. It definitely gave me a few gray hairs, because I saw the number of purchased boxes. Thank God it was just a mistake. There was some issue with the statistics calculation formula. Everything was fine. We had already built the stage. And the guys were arranging the screens for esports. So the screens were ready, everything was ready. The tables were fixed to the stage. I mean, they were not just standing there, but completely locked. Then one of our system administrators wanted to adjust one of the screens and found out that he could clearly see the opponent's screen. Just like that. Two teams were supposed to sit this way. They could see each other's screens. As I said, everything was fixed. The stage was ready. We were 16 hours behind schedule. The stage was nice and clean. We had a cleaner, so she cleaned everything properly. She was not happy about us hanging around. 
The guys were exhausted, and still we had to find a solution. Max was sleeping in a DX racer chair. For the first time in three days. Then suddenly, this Polish guy approached me, and he was like, shh, watch. So he was terribly angry. He said they could see everything. And I was really tired. I suggested, okay, guys, let's make them promise not to look at each other's screens. Like, no, I'm not looking. He said that would be unsportsmanlike. So I suggested putting a screen or something between them so they can't see each other. Eventually, we had to undo the tables, remove everything, and readjust the screens properly.